These black cards in set seven are snapped. What's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. This time we're going to go over the black cards that were spoiled Wednesday morning from set 7, particularly the black cards. I think these cards are absolutely insane. Almost every single one of them is pretty much good and playable. It's kind of weird that we got them spoiled on a Wednesday morning, but that does leave some speculation that maybe we'll get a different type of announcement on Friday like they usually do leading up to a set release. Who knows, maybe some ban list talk, but we really don't know, so we'll see what happens, right? But Weirdly enough, they were leaked on a Wednesday. We're going to go over these cards, talk about their implications. Already two insane cards, Assembling the Squad and Toki Toki City. We'll get to those in due time, though. Every single card in this blacklist feels playable. It feel, they feel strong. They, they don't feel like a waste. And I really, really like that. Uh, black, I'm not going to say black has been weak the past few sets or past few formats, but like it definitely got a big power boost in set six. And, you know, we had the introduction of the Toa deck. Vegeta Time Regulator is definitely a black mainstay staple nowadays. So black is, uh, mono black I guess in particular, has slowly and slowly been getting more and more power I guess you can say. And this set just really, really does it well. And uh, one card in particular, in my opinion, is absolutely insane. I hate it, but we'll talk about it when we get there I guess. So let's start with Sun Goku, Dimensional Defender. So as far as I know, this is the first Goku Zeno that's actually an Overrealm, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the rest of them I've seen, we have like the Deadly Defender, the Hardcaster 3. I think there's also like a Dark Overrealm one potentially, I don't necessarily remember, but there is also Crisis Crusher Sun Goku. This is the first one I'm remembering that has Overrealm. So just a fun fact, we'll read what it does. Overrealm 3 for 1 energy, auto, when this card attacks, you may choose one card in your life, add it to your hand. If you do, choose up to two black battle cards in your warp and place them in your drop area. I like this card a lot for a few reasons. One of which, you can cheat it in for one energy as a 15k beater. The other one, you can hard cast it for three, and every single time you attack with it, it's going to rip life. Almost like a Digging Deep, almost like a uh, Source of Power Sun Goku, things like that. I like this a lot for that reason. The other thing too, is that it helps you put cards from your warp back into your drop area. This is good for a few reasons. So a lot of awakened black leaders, they have the ability to do that on their awakened side. And what that does is it helps you facilitate overwhelm, right? Without having to mill your deck out. Having to continuously mill your deck out gives you a problem against certain things like mill, gives you certain issues um if you're just worried about decking out right even if it's not against mill milling too much in the game even if you're a burst leader it could be a huge problem in terms of decking out but this card helps you get two extra black cards back into your uh drop area from your warp and most of these awakened leaders only put three back to the drop from the warp so that pretty much limits you to overwhelm threes unless you're going to like start comboing cards to kind of neg and, and no one ever really wants to do that this card's really cool though because you can hard cast it on three swing with it do some self awakening and then you can uh, put two back in your drop. And then if you're able to awaken that turn, you can do an overrun five pretty easily. So I like that a lot. This card's really, really good. Really, really playable. I think it's a uh, minor black staple in my opinion. Son Goku making an entrance. This card is really weird seeming. The zero combo power is very, very strange. I guess Bandai felt like the black cards they were printing were very strong. So they wanted to limit them a little bit. So this really only seems just as good as a regular negate because normally when you have a body negate like this, the combo power is relevant, but on this card, it, it's not relevant, obviously. But there is a new Goku promo. I'll do a separate video on all the promos, but there is a Goku promo that can evolve over this. So that is something to keep in mind if you're going to play a deck themed around that card. This is going to be really good in that regard. Then we have the Vegeta making an entrance. This card's actually just insane. Uh, this card is actually a one-drop 15k beater, which is already good, but you can only play it via counter-counter. So let's see what its counter-counter does. Uh, it does not actually stop any counters. Really, really important to know. This is not like Battering Laser. It doesn't say anywhere on the card to negate the counter, but let's see what it does. Counter, counter. Choose three battle cards with an energy cost of three or more power and uh, power of 35,000 or less in your drop area. Place them at the bottom of your deck in any order. Play this card. So basically, this lets you put three, three battle cards from your drop back into your deck. This is pretty much an anti-mill card, which is pretty cool. It's pretty well designed, in my opinion, because they obviously use a ton of counters. So you can play this at any opportune moment against one of their counters. You're not going to stop the counter, like I said, but you are going to get another 15k beat stick in there to swing. And then you're also going to be able to put three cards back into your deck. So it's a little bit of an anti-mill card. This card can only be played from any area using counter-counter skills. And only one Vegeta making an entrance can be played in your battle area. So if they don't answer this, you're, or if you don't like combo it away or something, you're not going to be able to play another one. But I think this card is pretty good anti-mill hate. I, I saw that we were getting you know those color-coded combo cards like discard a card put three back into your deck blah 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 and those didn't seem super powerful because they were just in my opinion too costly like the, the discard on top of the combo was just a neg too right and i didn't like that but this card is really really solid because you get that beater in and you get to put three back into your deck pretty much generically i think this is really good 
Super Saiyan Trunks. This is a card they talked about in the design notes to give dimensional support trunks a target in mono black decks. Again, the zero combo power is pretty weird. Uh, funnily enough, if you play this in skillless on your awakened side, I believe this will be a 5k combo. Uh, but the zero combo power, again, does hold it back, which is kind of unfortunate. But if you're ever playing a mono black deck with dimension support trunks, this card is probably going to be a three to four of. The only reason I don't say four of is because of that zero combo power. But once again, uh, a cool tool for mono black. But this is definitely not one of the strongest cards the, the set is getting for black. Trunks time regulator, overrealm three, auto. When you play this card using overrealm, draw two cards, then choose one card in your hand, send it to your warp. So this is basically a lower costed Bardock Awakened Instincts. This is going to be in a main set though, so it's going to be a little bit easier to access for some players, even though the anniversary box wasn't super difficult. I think the common Bardock is probably like a 50 cent card, but regardless, this is an overrealm three, so it's a little bit easier to set up, especially for black leaders that mill three or return three from warp to drop area. And uh, you have the draw two, and then you warp one. So a little bit worse i guess you can say than the bardock because you're warping one from your hand afterwards instead of sending it to your drop so you're not necessarily fueling that next overrealm but this card's still really powerful it almost might be a straight upgrade to uh, time patrol trunks unless you have really good ways to manipulate your draws uh this card is almost a time patrol trunks that basically draws two instead of like looks at one and puts one on the bottom or top right so this is a pretty strong upgrade from that card in most decks in my opinion also notice that i guess we're getting like a a time regulator archetype there's a vegeta time regulator there's this time regulator and i believe there's also a supreme kai time regula regulator right here so this is a one drop it is a 3k battle card so notice you can grab this off of toki toki and then uh it is a blocker auto when you play this card draw one so it's basically a cantrip blocker i guess it's kind of neat again the zero combo power thing is kind of weird i'm not a huge fan of that but i mean still strong enough you can fetch it from the deck with toki toki it is what it is notice too that it looks like they're putting the series 7 release stamp on rares which is something we haven't seen before putting this type of stamp on that kind of weird foiling i'm not sure if they're gonna go with like shatter foil in this set or just normal foil i guess time will tell they're also doing series 7 pre-release stamps on promo cards too so keep that in mind Demigod the Sorcerer, this card's really weird, but we'll give it a read. Auto, when you play this card, you may choose one card in your life, add it to your hand. So a generic take a life self-awakener, I really, really like that a lot. And if you do, your opponent chooses cards in their hand and places them in their drop area until they have 12 cards in hand. So I guess this is like cool hate for something like Hercule. If Hercule ever came back into the scene, drawing like 16 cards, 20 card hands. But uh, I don't think that effect is supposed to be super relevant. I think the effect's just kind of supposed to be there just in case it comes up. But the auto take one life for any deck is really cool. This helps a lot of slow decks kind of speed up and just get through their life a little bit faster so they can't get stalled out. This card's really cool. I, li I like it a lot. Next up, we have Toa Dimensional Leaper. So a lot of uh, confusion surrounding this card. I'm almost 99.9% .9 sure that even though it's a counterplay, choose two cards in your drop area, send them to your ward, play this card, you're going to also have to pay the two energy to play it. Because just like Master Roshi Negate, just like any of the uh, body counterplays or body negates, you have to pay the cost in the top left corner to play them. So a lot of people are speculating, like, oh, this is going to be insane against Victory Strike. This would have been really, really cool as a Victory Strike counter if they would have said ignore its energy cost or made it like, I don't know, a zero cost, but you can't really make it a zero cost battle card. That'd be a little bit too busted. But Revenge Blocker for black, we also got one for yellow in this set. So uh, Revenge is something that a lot of people wanted back in the game, and it looks like we're getting it. Uh, I'd like to see it on a few more cards. I do a few more neat things, but that's just my opinion. This card I think is really, really cool, really, really good. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. Then we'll go Assembling the Squad. I hate this card so much already. And uh, Danny hasn't even broken it yet. Danny Wynn, for those of you guys that don't remember, he broke the Super Shenron deck. But with that being said, this card is admittedly more balanced than Child's Wish, if not for any other reason, except for it only chooses two or less, not three or less. So you're limited to a smaller card pool, but kind of counteracting that. The fact that you can get cards from your deck, play battle cards from your deck, make this card pretty much broken like i'm not gonna go on a you know doom cry yet because i'm like i said i like to wait until the format develops itself to see how these cards perform uh but this card is pretty insane just from the looks of it so a few things for example you can play the new two drop boo from the anniversary box uh you can either free play it on turn two or on turn three then evolve over it for two reds into the five drop boo do aod shenanigans which is pretty dumb especially on turn two and you also have the ability to grab the green san kava uh, teamwork San Kaba from the deck for Shenron Veggies. So this basically gives you like 12 copies of San Kaba if you think about it, because you have four copies of Kaba, four copies of this, and you have your uh, four Dragon Radar that can search this. So it's like 
somewhat like 12 copies, maybe 10. I don't know. You could argue on the math there. But uh, this card is insane because it fetches from the deck. Like in, in the example of Kaba, in the old Charon Veggies, you had to open with Kaba. You had to pitch it either by comboing or by one star balling. But now this card just fetches it from the deck straight up. So this card is insane in a lot of instances. And a lot of instances is better than Child's Wish. But I guess it's restri more restrictive than Child's Wish by one energy cost. So I don't know. Time will tell what happens with this card. I know a lot of people are already experimenting with it. But uh, not a fan. Let's just say I'm not a fan. I think it's going to be very, very powerful. A little bit too powerful. Time Transmission G. Activate main. Choose the one black battle card with energy cost of four or less in your warp and play it. If the battle card played with this skill has Overrealm or Dark Overrealm, choose up two of your energy. Switch from active mode. So I really, really like how they're giving us a buffed uh, Dark Plot because Dark Plot only untaps three it untaps three energy which is really strong but it only does so if you play a card that has overrealm this works for overrealm and dark overrealm which i'm a huge fan of this card's really really cool any untapped two black leader can uh spam this card on turn four which is pretty insane get a lot of beaters out on the board but the next card that we're going to read if it is the next card yes it is the next card this next card we're about to read is going to render that card sort of useless like you're still going to be able to spam beaters on the board is what, is what i'm trying to say so Toki Toki City, a one drop field card. Uh, when you play a battle card using Overrealm, place the top card of your deck under this card. So, so far, we don't see any leader restrictions. I don't think there are. Oh, we do see a leader restriction going into the activate main. Okay. Just wanted to double check that. So, activate main, choose three cards under this card and send them to your warp. If your leader card is black, battle cards you play using Overrealm aren't sent to warps at the end of this turn. So, basically, the first three turns you Overrealm, you put a card underneath this, and then by turn three, you can you can wait on it for later. But by turn three, you're able to activate main, get rid of three cards, and whatever Overrealm you play for duration of the turn is going to stick around. So, that's pretty insane thinking about like playing a Scientist Foo on turn four, or turn three, depending. And, um, maybe if you have like Wormhole or something, and being able to keep it around on board is pretty insane but i think in most scenarios you're gonna have to wait till turn four at least i can't tell right off the bat or remember if there are any other cards that are able to put cards underneath toki toki city but uh you're gonna have to use the first three turns to get three cards underneath this card and then on turn four it seems like or turn three if you have wormhole you're gonna be able to play another card using Overrealm, and that's absolutely insane this card is gonna be a very strong card in black decks in my opinion uh the only few down uh, downsides to it which of course there should be downsides to a card that's strong it's an extra card so it's a little bit of a clunker it's a one drop so you might have to spend your turn one playing it you don't get a draw off of it immediately or anything like that and then you're going to be thinning your deck a lot faster so the issue in this game with putting cards underneath other cards is that like if you put a key piece under toki toki city like a super combo or a really strong overrealm you're going to probably miss that card later on in the game unless you're able to recycle it luckily we do have vegeta time regulator in the in the game so that does help you recycle those cards that you put underneath toki toki city later on but just a few drawbacks cards incredibly strong still in my opinion i'm a really big fan of this card and then we have another card an unexpected turn this is a one drop black counterplay uh but it does not look like we have any leader color restrictions so this is going to be playable in any deck which i really really like uh pretty much every color at this point has a counterplay now but i do like how this one is generic to all uh counterplays or all leaders i guess counterplay if your opponent has three or more battle cards in play with energy cost of two or more that's so that's the uh, requirement the battle card your opponent is playing is placed in its owner's drop area instead. So you basically kill whatever they're playing, which is absolutely insane. Uh, so even if they're playing like a huge dude, uh, minus deflect, they're, you're going to get rid of it if they have too many cards on board. Then choose all battle cards when it costs two or less, ignoring barrier, send them to their owner's warp. So keep in mind that this is also going to warp your battle cards, but in black, that's not typically going to be a problem because, you know, Overrealm, your stuff goes away at the end of the turn. But keep that in mind. This is like a one drop board wipe if your opponent has too many cards on in, uh, on board. So this is absolutely insane in my opinion. I like this card a lot. And then we have uh, Son Goku Saiyan Transcendence. I guess we'll get to it in this video. I didn't realize it was going to be lumped in with the black cards. I thought it would be in promos, but it makes sense because it's actually in the set, not in the promos. So this is a five drop Son Goku Zeno Super Saiyan. This card looks absolutely dope. I love the card art. It's a double strike. Zeno evolved for one energy. Super cheap. A one energy evolved for a five drop is insane. It evolves over a Son Goku Zeno with energy cost of three or less. So off the bat, we have the new overall one we saw today. We have the counter attack one. We have Crisis Crusher. And we have uh, the Deadly Defender, all possible targets for this. Permanent, if you have any non-black cards in areas other than your deck, hand, or life, you can't play this card from any area. So basically, you have to be playing mono black, because if you mill something that's off color, you're not going to be able to play this card. Permanent, if you have three or less energy, 
you can't play this card from any area. So they're basically preventing you from doing this like turn two, turn one, which is pretty fair. You know, turn three doing this um, by using the counterattack on your opponent's turn or Crisis Crusher on turn one and it just sits there. That's totally fine in my opinion. So doing this on turn three, activate main once per turn, choose up to four black battle cards in your warp and place them in your drop area. So this is absolutely nuts because basically, like I said before, those awakened black leaders, they put three back into the drop and then this card will put four. So that gets you set up for something like a, a scientist foo or any other large overall like that. So in my opinion, this card is crazy, crazy, crazy good. I don't know if there can be a deck fully revolved around it. There probably will be, probably will be able to do that. I'm super excited to start messing around with like mono black decks coming out of set seven. This is a card I actually want to build a deck around because this card looks super dope for one and for two, it's got a pretty strong effect, a very, very cheap double strike. So you're able to just put pressure on. I'm a huge fan of it. But guys, that's the entire black part of set seven in this video. Again, we went a little bit out of order because I was very excited to talk about these black cards. One, I think is super broken, assembling the squad. Two, Toki Toki City, I think is very good. A lot of these other black cards, I think are just very, very good. Minus a zero combo power. I think every single card in this uh, set is playable. Even the zero combo power cards, in my opinion, are playable. So if you guys are fans of mono black or want to start splashing these cards, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think about these cards in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Joey. This is Crossroad TCG. And I'll see you guys in the next video.